question about the uh, kind of the structure. I'm, I'm in the, the the introductory first uh, course for GRC, uh, so I'm just starting on my dissertation, and I noticed that the structure is each week I'm submitting something to my uh, dissertation chair, um, but it uh, it also says that it takes about one week to get feedback from the professor, and yet something's kind of due every week. So I'm wondering what the timeline is there. Am I supposed to be waiting till I hear, like I submitted my uh, premise to him last week? So am I supposed to be waiting until I hear back from him before starting on the next step, or how does that work? Yes, that's correct. Um, de depending on the, the type of assignment, it would take upwards to one week to complete the, assi the, the for an, an assignment such as that to be reviewed and approved. Dr. Haney, do you want to chime in on that? Sure. So I can add on to that. And great question, by the way. And um, I, I, I really uh, appreciate that because um, this helps you and the chair actually with your premise uh, statement get focused as to, well, where exactly are you doing when it comes to your dissertation and are you heading in the right direction? So what I always advise my students, because I currently teach classes as well too, is that yes, definitely try to stay on that seven day uh, window of providing that feedback to you all, because then um, when you get that, you can make changes now. And that doesn't prohibit you because we have opened up the milestones that you can look ahead. Only thing I caution you with that don't get too focused on moving too much ahead, because then if you get some feedback from your chair that you got to kind of change things, um, a lot, then you know some of that work that you've already did, you know, it's kind of been in vain. So I would recommend that if you feel like you're antsy and you want to go ahead and start moving to the next uh, milestone, to communicate with your chair and, and let him or her, or she, um, him or her, know that uh, what your um, desires are before you just move ahead. Does that make sense? Yes, that that makes sense. I, I guess I was just wondering, like, so. The submission looks like it's still kind of set up like the courses, like if uh, there's a deadline Sunday at midnight, if I don't submit by that time timeline, is, is it, if I'm late, is that okay? Because I'm waiting for feedback yeah, from my- Yeah, that's, that's okay, that's fine. That kind of gives you that um, opportunity to turn it in because we got to have some kind of um, deadline dates in there. But if you're working with your chair and you've already submitted and you're just waiting on that person, then no, you're not going to get penalized because I, I try to let students know that this is, or doctoral candidates, because that's basically what you all are, that it's not <laughs> bringing to the classroom where you kind of left from that, you know, yes, if you don't turn in your assignment by this due date, then you're going to get penalized. Yeah, in these dissertation phases, I kind of rather call them like blocks, there's no penalty for um, you know, when you turn in your assignments and you're waiting for some feedback, et cetera, because there's no grade, as you know, right? It's just a pass or, um, or you're still um, <clears throat> moving on um, in the process. So, uh, yeah, so don't get too um, stressed about that if you didn't hear nothing by Sunday and Sunday happens to be that fifth day and you know that chair has two more days to respond to you, that you're okay. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh, you're welcome. But also make sure and, and definitely and um, when regards to attendance and participation that, you know, you, you're discussing things in the uh, forum so that way we can capture that students are engaged in a classroom because that's one thing we do want to get better with when it comes to the GRC is, is, is just having that discussion. I know we kind of talk a lot outside of the classroom in the emails and it's just a little bit added on, but I just kind of wanted to make sure I just touched on this um, since it was fresh in my mind, and for others that are in the, in the forum that try to do a lot of the communication as well within the um, uh, classroom so you don't get a, a call from Eddie or Tina or whomever that, you know, you're not participating. So that also helps a lot when it comes to engagement. Okay, I see. Thank you. All right, I'm done, Eddie. Thanks. Well, thank, thank you, Dr. Haney. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great question and a popular question that we get a lot. Um, and thank you, Dr. Haney, for giving your perspective on that uh, as well. And, and a good point. You guys are not just students, you're doctoral candidates. And this is not like your other courses. It's designed differently. It's not just committing and waiting to do an assignment. It's an iterative process. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you, Daniel, for your question. Well, um, there were some questions that were brought up in the registration. 
Um, but I want to go ahead and open up to all of you first. Um, anybody else would like to have any questions as well for Dr. Haney, myself, and Tina? Yeah, all right. this is Samir Nicholas. Uh, first, thank you for having this. It's really important and helpful. Uh, since I've been in uh, connection with Tina regarding some challenges I'm facing with starting my dissertation. Uh, first, I'm having issues with uh, with the pro maybe probably it's a subject I picked because uh, the chair maybe she's not so knowledgeable about my subject. Uh, that's why I I feel like I've been uh, delayed for a long time now. I'm on my third uh, third time trying to get on my first uh, step the permit. Uh, and still, every time there's different changes, different, which I understand. I spoke to Tina about it. But what's the path for overcoming such challenges? For example, uh, it just by using abbreviation that I used before, stuff like this, that's I keep getting my paper return uh, due to little things that probably sometimes maybe the person checking the, my paper they're not following up where my writing uh, path is going so how do you suggest to do in this case i'll i'll kind of comment on that first and i'm sure dr haney would like to comment on that so i, I do understand you worked with tina very closely uh, samir uh, on this so thank you for bringing that to my attention. The student service is always is, look, is always aiming to uh, ensure that your success and concerns are discussed, and we can of course overview solutions to get you there. Um, so it seems to me, from what you're saying, is that you know that there you're kind of stuck in a spot and with your dissertation. What court? What course are you in right now? I'm still. What in GRC GRC for uh, for uh, six four zero the first one. First one, okay, all right. So you're early in the process. I get it. So you know, creating a topic is of course very critical to starting the probe to getting on the right track. Um, and sometimes the first class appears to be I don't want to say the hardest, but the the most dot the most time committed at times compared to other ones because of the actually getting started on something that is going to be approved or can be researched. Mind me asking, when was the last time you spoke to your chair and directly uh, brought about like these exact concerns? Well, I spoke about this issue with her a couple of times. Uh, as again, Tina, she's been very helpful about it and she's been really great motivation about it. But I'm reaching a place where she reached to her uh, I don't know, another chair, and they came up with the new comments, and I did these comments, but the issue, again, it's like I feel there's, uh, I'm, 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 I'm sure she's a great uh, chair, and she's very helpful, I'm not saying about that, maybe, as you mentioned, and as Tina mentioned before, that there's a problem, maybe, the way I'm communicating, maybe, maybe it's from my way, from my side, but again, it's changes and requests for changes for stuff that it's really, I don't know. I don't want to take it so about personal problems on this uh, call, but I just want to ask you your opinion about how to move forward and what other uh, ways I can use in this case. Good. That, that's good. good. I think a good reflection of how you felt with the program. Um, I'll, I'll speak briefly. I don't know if Tina wants to comment and, and Dr. Haney as well. Um, so you made a good point. I, I like that you addressed that. You know, it take, you know, it, taking it personal. Understandably, the doctorate program is a different experience in the sense that you're working um, and doing revisions, and um, I think the expectations will be a little different than just passing a class or an exam. So that's something that I hear. I've been working with the doctor students for many years. Uh, I hear very often is you know the first kind of the frustration or kind of stress of having to go back and redo work, and that is very common for a lot of our alumni and graduates. It's going to be like that. Um, it's it's not going to be perfect. I don't. I've never seen. I think a doctor student 
that completed the doctorate program perfectly. I've seen students do regular courses, like, for example, management or marketing 600 perfectly almost, pretty much, but not the doctorate program. It's not perfect. You're not expected to be perfect. That's why it's a dissertation. So, you know, my goal and Tina's goal and Dr. Amy's goal is that as you work on these revisions, that you are so communicating effectively in a report with your instructor. Um, and that's something that, or chair, excuse me. Um, you know, ideally, you know, um, there are hopes to not be a change, uh, but, you know, at times, you know, that may or may not happen. I can't say it has not happened with students, um, but it's not always a solution. Um, sometimes students change and then they chairs and then it actually have to go back and do things. Um, that's actually more often than not. I know you've been working with Tina very closely, so let Tina comment on, on, on uh, your concern or question. Yes, hello, hi, hello everyone. And, uh, hi, Samir. I do remember the conversations we have had, and uh, I was hoping that your experience has changed since we previously followed up on, um, you know, and, uh, and, and and Eddie brings up actually a really great point uh, when he, and I do want to emphasize it as well, uh, that you do need that, having that rapport with your chair and the constant communication can really correct a lot of these issues. I remember having this conversation with you before. Um, it looks like we still need to follow up and see where we're at again. So I will follow up with you uh, after this meeting, um, just so we can get an update and uh, see where you're at. Um, I would also want to open it up to Dr. Haney and see if he has additional input on this because what you're going through, um, while it's going to be different from other students, it may not be completely unusual either. So he may have some comments that may be helpful for you. Thank you, yeah, Tina. Sure. Dr. Haney, go, yeah. go ahead. I'm sure you have some comments. Yeah, sure. You may not be familiar with your specific situation that you're going through. I apologize for the frustration. Uh, definitely. This is def not something that I want to hear, um, and I want to make sure that you know my perspective is student focused. Well, not perfect. Things do happen, and as Eddie had uh, stated earlier, that of course this is an iterative process, and so nonetheless, there's going to be some changes, there'll be some back and forth with things, and to go through things uh, together. One thing that I uh, want to do is to make sure that we have consistent chairs. Why? Because that way then that kind of helps with that continuity. It helps with that communication of your topic specifically. Now, yes, as you have pointed out earlier, that um, especially that chair may not be familiar with your specific topics. That's something I do want to change because I would like to try to align that a little bit better. But um, as we go through the process of things, will kind of change that. But for right now, of course, we need to focus more on trying to help you move forward. And I'm not, again, like I said, sure of your process. I know Tina is going to reach out um, to you. So Tina, you can um, throw me in on the emails or whatever and find out specifically because, yeah, there's no need to kind of um, go specifically with your um, uh, individual situation that we can um, address. Um, offline to help you and then I can look into it and try to help to find out exactly what the stop gaps are and what I can do to help kind of help push you on and get you in the right direction. So is that fair enough? Thank you. Really appreciate it and thank you for the feedback. So again, yeah, my name is uh, Dr. Haney. So feel free to reach out to any, anybody. Feel free to reach out to me. Of course, what I do try to emphasize first is Please, as Tina had pointed out as well, make that contact, make that communication um, with your chairs and, and try to get that collegial environment because I think that's just so important is me being a chair myself that it's just so tangible that when I have that relationship with students or doctoral candidates to kind of have that knowledge base of, all right, hey, all right, I mean, I may not sometimes be familiar with that topic. But guess what? We're all here for learning because it's an institutional uh, institution for learning, right? So um, so that's important. But I think that um, definitely in case by case basis, uh, I like to get involved to help to um, um, get, get, get you guys moving in the right direction um, at times. So, all right, more to, uh, more to follow with this. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Haney. Oh, yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, 
I share the same issues that have been raised by my colleague. But uh, just what I just want to advise my colleague is that uh, there's need for him and the chair to establish rapport and also to have time to share his thoughts, perception about the area of study. Uh, I just want to seek clarification on the relationship between the student and the, the uh, reviewers apart from the chair. Okay, you said the relationship between the chair and the student? You wanted to kind of clarify that? I mean the, the reviewers apart from the chair. Do we have a direct link with the other reviewers or the link is through the chair? So, John, maybe I have a little trouble hearing you. Is this, this is Edson, correct? Yes. Yes, Edson. So you're asking what is the link? What is the, I'm, I'm so sorry, maybe just a little bit of bad audio uh, connection or not, not uh, uh, optimum, but uh, you're asking like what's the, how is the best way to contact the chair or be in communication with the chair? Is that what you're, you're asking? No, I'm asking the, the relationship between the student and the other two reviewers. Okay. We have the review committee. We have the chairperson and the two reviewers. Are you talking about the committee reviewers, the committee members? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. I see what you're saying. <laughs> so, um, are you in 645 right now? I'm in 641. Okay, because this your your committee members won't be assigned until six forty five. Yes. Chapter five. So your relationship with the chair would be um just that, your relationship with them. The committee members don't come in until um you're done with your um dissertation, with your study, with your product, and you're ready to defend it. So those two individuals, their responsibility is to review your dissertation and basically look for information that they feel is going to, um, um, you know, now I wouldn't say contradict, that would be a hard word, but um, see how much you know about your study and how confident you are on what you've completed. So those individuals won't come in until way later on. So if that's your question, um, I'm hoping that that helps with your, as this has been your answer. Is that what you was looking for? Yeah, okay, it's clear. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Edson. Thank you, Dr. Haney, for answering, clarifying that. Thank you, Edson. I'm so sorry I wasn't initially understanding the question, but I'm glad we got that clarified. Thank you for your patience. Okay, well, thank you, Edson. Thank you for the question, um, but I know we, I see we have still some more people on the line. Um, Juanita, Juanita Wilson just joined us. I know there's also uh, Dottie Deerwester on the line, and, and if you're still on the line with us, please go ahead if you have additional questions. Uh, I, I know that many of you are on GRC 641, which is your first class. Um, some, some of you did attend orientation or were able to view a recording of GRC orientation, but of course, the purpose of today's meeting is to kind of piggyback on, on that and to kind of gather more thoughts since you've been in class for a week or maybe we we or took the class last term. So please go ahead. Um, we still have ample time to have any more questions or discuss any comments so far in your experience or anything you, you're thinking in the future you'd like to learn more about. We, we do have some anonymous yeah. questions here. We can start getting into those. Uh, I know there was there was one submitted. Um, can we use old resources in the review of literature? Uh, I, I mean, I do remember this was answered in GRC orientation. 
uh, you're not supposed to use uh, sources that are older than seven years. It's got to be five to seven years at the oldest. You want to use very new uh, sources. Uh, and I mean, that would be the short answer to that question. Uh, there, someone has asked, there, someone has written, there's a significant problem with the course instructions not aligning to the dissertation template provided by the school. For example, chapter two and the assignment do don't match. Uh, that would be something I think we would need to look more closely at in the course room. I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. Uh, whoever who submitted it, do you want to add in uh, more details or um, add on to the question so we can better understand it okay. and better, better provide an answer for you? Okay. Hi, this is Juanita. That was my question. I'm having sure, a little bit of... Hi, I'm a little bit of a problem with the um, work that I'm present in the course lining up to the dissertation template. And it, it, the template seems to be straightforward and it tells us what to do and what, what chapters. But then when we get to the courses, it seems like the courses is asking for information that's not aligning to what the template is indicating that's due for a particular chapter. For instance, in um, 42, I think the first thing it's asking us for the course is to provide some of the um, the, the, literature, the literature review, I believe it's asking for, but in the template, it's asking for, for chapter two, something completely different. So that's why I was saying, how, what is it why aren't the two aligned to each other and working together? Okay, um, so have you reviewed this with your chair yet, Juanita, that you've, you've found kind of like some uh, discrepancy between the template and the assignment uh, requirement in the course room? Y yes. Um, for example, it says chapter two literature review. Historical development of the topic is one of the first sections in that. But then on, on the course, it's asking for the literature review, and we provide 60, I think it says 60 or 30 literature reviews. So to me, and it, it, it may just be me, it, that seems out of sync because I started writing towards what the chapter or the template was guiding us to. And then I read what the course is asking for, and now the course is saying, oh, you need to have 60 um, of your literature reviews put together. And so I had to stop and shift and get some of my literature reviews put together. So it seems like they're not, they're not working hand in hand with each other. They're going in two different directions, at least from how I'm looking at it. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Haney, do you have any comments on that? Uh, and I'm not also, I know that Tina's worked with Juanita, but Dr. Haney, do you have any, any comments on, on that at the moment? Excuse me. Yeah. Um, actually, Juanita's one of my students, so I know firsthand on this one here, so I can speak uh, firsthand on this. And really, um, yeah, I, I do get it. And, and I think we spoke. Um, I was wondering, I think I sent you an email yesterday um, regarding that. And yeah, I, I do want to make some changes with the alignment of things. Um, some of the information that's in the course room and then aligned with the template uh, could be some more additional um, work that is required outside of the uh, dissertation template. But uh, in my mind, I think that we could probably kind of tweak those and change those a little bit. Um, so I think in the uh, near future, we can make some changes, not helping you, Juanita, except for, as I told everyone that's outside of me um, and speaking with other chairs, is that just work with your students specifically because, yeah, using your um, template as that Bible, as that guide, uh, because that is going to be the source of where you're going to, of course, say your dissertation is complete with that but then the um um the course information 
um, kind of enhance that, but I can't agree at times that we could probably make things a little bit more clear. So um, that's something that we um, definitely um, will try to work on. And as I uh, spoke with um, others about that as well. Okay, great. The template and the rubric seems to work hand in hand together. And it's right. for me, the way that I write, it's very helpful because I can go to the rubric, figure out what goes in that chapter to get a better view, but then I get thrown off course because the, the coursework is asking for something different. So yeah, I think lining it all up would really help, I think, everyone. Yeah. And again, and, and, just, just my thought. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, like for example, the uh, GRC 642 asked for you to conduct me to um, develop a um, literature matrix. Uh, or make your fees. I mean, because obviously you're going to have more um, in dealing with your references, et cetera. And so, you know, really, I tailor that more to my students as to what they feel comfortable in. And like you just stated, Juanita, that if you're comfortable in the format that you're doing, as I've only advised you to do, is stay on that format because I think that that, of course, will help you to be more um, productive. Um, so, nonetheless, the beauty of this whole dissertation process is that it's a fluid process and it's a helpful process when it comes to not being just constrained like you are in a classroom as to what you can do and maneuver through that's going to make sense and helpful for you. That's okay, great. I just, yeah, I, I, that's great. I just wanted to, you know, see if anyone else had the same thought. And yeah, I appreciate your email and your responsiveness. And that was great for me um, because I'm still writing and moving forward with using the template. So thank you. You're welcome. I see a, one more anonymous question here. Uh, it was submitted by someone who's not currently in the go to meeting, but I don't think we need like you know any additional information from this person. It could be answered. It's, the person's just asking um, for information pertaining to the bibliography section and the required number of references. Uh, again, this was a question that I do you know was answered in GRC orientation. If we need to revisit it, um, Dr. Haney, do you want to remind us again how many references students typically need? For, for literature review and the bibliography section? Sure, I mean, um, as, as it states in uh, 642, as a guide between the 70 to 100, and I know we kind of discussed about the um, uh, uh, parameters of it being the uh, five to seven years. And there's a reason for that because this is not a research uh, type of um, degree, but more of a business concept of not just basic on theory, but on practicum of what's happening out there right now. I know it is a frustration, and I know I, I, I speak with many of my students about that, of the difficulties of trying to find um, that, uh, uh, that piece of um, scholarly um, reference or peer review, et cetera. And so um, as I tell everybody, and then I think it's helpful for the forum that um, folks that are available that's listening, that, you know, you can find stuff that has been referenced in the past that is in a newer article and still use that information there. But um, nonetheless, um, you know, it is um, the understanding of what you are trying to accomplish with this um, DBA is to find that current information that's out there and current meaning no more than seven years, that that's why you're focusing on your topic that's going to help um, others to understand exactly what your topic wants to accomplish, albeit if you're doing a qualitative or quantitative analysis, um, if you have hypotheses or not. But the bottom line is, as to answer the question, eh, about 70 to 100 um, of the uh, scholarly um, articles, references would be um, appropriate. Thank you, Dr. Haney. Uh, and, and thank Welcome. you everyone for questions and uh, you're still welcome to ask. I think we've burned through the, the questions that I've seen here on the mm -hmm. list that um, the you folks have submitted that are participating and that are here in attendance. So, I mean, so you just please ask more if you have more right now while we're here. Yeah. We still have some time. We still have some time. Um, I think you've done a really, thank you all for sharing your comments and, and thank you, Dr. Haney, for answering and supporting 
um, our, our open forum today. So please do so. Uh, I, I know that there are uh, other questions that brought up were regarding similar to what, what Tina was saying that they're from the GRC orientation. Uh, but is there anybody else, anybody that has yet to speak that would like to bring about any comments or questions? Hello? Yes, hello. Yes, I just want to uh, just raise an issue on the minimum period, five to seven years. What about when we are doing the historic the historical perspective? Can we have an, ex an exception when you are dealing with the historical perspective? So sorry, I think you're you're maybe a little little close to the microphone. Um, coming coming off a little hard to hear you. Can you repeat that? I, I'm so sorry. I am saying. I am saying on literature review when you are doing the historical perspective. The literature review, okay. Yes, I, yeah. I hear that. When you are looked, uh, following the issues of the history of the topic or history of the theories that you are doing, at times we are forced to quote uh, peer reviewed literature, which is more than seven years. You're asking about the five to seven years again, the peer-reviewed journal articles and, and those. Uh, what exactly are you asking about that? That's what we have trouble hearing. I am saying when you are writing about the historical perspective of the study. Oh, when you start writing about the historical perspective of, of the study? Okay. Yes. That sounds, that sounds like a very academic question. Um, I'm sure yeah, this one's definitely for Dr. Haney. So are you asking about the um, five to seven years and uh, if you have to go outside of that parameter, is that I think what you're asking? Yes, especially when you are writing about the historical perspective of the study. Mm -hmm. I mean, only thing I recommend uh, folks to do is that uh, try to find relevant updated articles that reference that historical information. Because I mean, like for example, management, um, you can have um, Drucker information that is back in the 80s, 90s. Obviously you can't use that as being one of your articles, but yet you can find a uh, author who references this type of information and you can write about it as well too. Um, because well, one thing, I mean, yes, you gotta have the, plethora of the uh, articles and of course you know you would find it out as you would start with your um, preliminary research to find out if that's even more information out there well if you can't find enough of that five to seven years um, articles that's out there then you probably need to think about um, looking at changing your topic so that's the one thing that's important there but the second thing that's important that um, you, you just don't have to be constrained because there are a lot of um articles that are out there that are still current that do talk about historical uh, information that there's no reason that you can't utilize that within that article but um again this just keeps you from sitting here writing um uh work that is back in i don't know 1950s that really may not be relevant that's going on right now in 2020. does that help Okay. Yeah, I do, Doctor. Thank you. All right, you're so welcome. Thank, thank you, Doctor Haney, for for jumping in on that question, and th thank sure. you Ed, for bringing that up and for clarifying. Uh, all right, and and else would like to? And I know on the line we have Edson, Juanita, Samir, Sadi, and Dan Garcia. Is there anyone also that maybe not be on the GoToMeeting app, but on our your our teleconference line? Has yet to speak, or anybody like to acknowledge you know, their presence today, so we can, you know, ensure we, we acknowledge your presence today. Say hi, yeah. Say hi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if not, it's okay. Just double checking because we're about a little bit past, a little over half past the hour. Uh, let's see here. Going over a couple more questions uh, as well. Um, one comment made by a student uh, as well, maybe we didn't already address it, was regarding chapter two. 
Was there any questions for those who maybe already in chapter two um, regarding the, the instruction, the lining with the template? Any concerns regarding chapter two? Oh, that was, yeah, that was the one that uh, Juanita. <clears throat> Okay, just, just put, I know Juanita had some questions regarding yeah. that. Just want to clarify, are there any additional questions regarding chapter two? Let's see here. We talked about the library section, old resources, the premise study. A question was raised regarding uh, how to request data collection from a current or past employer. That's a good, that's an interesting question because I know uh, having data collection from an employer, whether past or present, can be challenging, especially a past employer. That may be detrimental to your study um, if they even allow that. I know one thing is that, you know, it must be approved by your employer. And that also, I, I believe, is correlated with your, I, your future IRB uh, as well, especially if you're using certain, a certain population. Um, Dr. Hinn, do you have any suggestions if a student would like to request data from a current or past employer, how they may go about that? Or any, any feedback, maybe how to best address that? I know with my experience, that can be rather challenging from I've seen from previous dissertations. Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, most definitely to um, protect the privacy of that organization. Of course, we all know that we don't put that organization name or anything like that on there unless of course definitely you have approval and you just have to add that into your dissertation that you actually have that um company um in there but that's something that you had to discuss with the chair but any information that you're pulling from anywhere that is not your own you got to have permission on and so um yeah that's a red flag if you want to write about your previous company and there's information that potentially could be linked to that organization, then you have to um, get the permission from that organization. Um, as to who you would speak to, of course, would be potentially, well, your supervisor or your former supervisor on how you would want to be able to gain that information, albeit HR, um, if it goes up through the sea levels, I can tell you from the past experience that I've had that some of my students have um, with a current organization that they've had received uh, permission to uh, gather information that pertains to that organization. And um, they actually, as part of that appendix, provided the letter from the COO that that person had that, inf that uh, um approval to uh, utilize the information that they have gained from their study um, to one, of course, make sure it goes to their organization because most organizations want to know uh, well, what's going on with them and what are you studying them about? And then two, uh, making sure that um, privacy is of the utmost and who's going to have record of that and when it will be destroyed, et cetera. So, um, so the short answer is, is that yes, if you want to, um, get uh, information from your current or previous organization, you do need to have something in writing to protect the, not only the organization, but yourself uh, for liability. Thank you, Dr. Haney. You're welcome. Thank you all for your, for your question. Um, I, I think you all brought, brought up excellent, you received each, You've asked excellent questions, and I'm glad that we were able to connect with that feedback. Understandably, if there's more questions, and myself and Tina are available individually to set up a time to follow up and, and discuss that further in detail, because I know this is an open forum, so there may be things you want to discuss one-on-one -on -one or privately, or with your uh, individual chair as well. Um, so, uh, and, and just an ideal, and I, on our screen here, we see a graduate on the screen, I believe in of our commencement in 2018, if I understand. So all of you here, you know, are in the last lap, I want to say last phase of your program. And so I want to just kind of remind you that you're almost there. It, it may it may not be, if many of you are in 641, it may be at the end of the year or a year from now, but at the end of the day, it'll be just like what you see on your screen and what you envision yourself a couple of years ago, which is graduating 
and being a doctorate for the rest of your life and have a paper that is really, really important to your success and your career. So um, it, it's some, I'll, it, it's the purpose of today, just that open forum and ensure if any concerns or questions, we can have more of those as well. But most importantly, um, never give up. If there are times when you need to speak to us and, and speak to Dr. Haney in your chair, always don't hesitate to give us a call. So, and we also are always seeking to improve our, our, our services and support systems to enhance your experience and success. So, is there anything you'd like to further discuss and, and bring up? We are more than open to discuss now and would love to hear what you have to say. Um, but thank you again for all your questions. Any, and any, any additional questions for, for our, today's forum? If, if not, um, it's approaching about 11.40 a.m. Pacific time. Um, so if there's not a, any other further comments or questions, I'll close up shortly. Um, but I want to thank you again, all of you attending today. Uh, and um, further, of course, want to just pop up an email to us in our chair or Dr. Haney, please do so. Um, and I want to, you know, want to congratulate you on reaching this milestone again dissertation phase as we end term two um, so any other last just the last call I guess I can say last call for any I, questions I, or comments I have one question next oh it's one either next time we do a, a call like this is it possible to kind of do it later in the evening for us on the east coast because it's kind of in the middle of our our work day and I had to scramble a little bit to find a place to run to do this uh, because I wanted to participate. And the other thing, um, just an FYI, maybe it just happened to me, I may be the odd case out, but I was trying to find out how to log into the conference, um, not knowing that the um, uh, setup email went into my spam folder. So when you send out the uh, announcements of these particular um, forums, if you can remind us to maybe look in spam or, or our junk just in case, the um, confirmation email goes there, so we know where to look just in case. Okay, that's excellent. No, definitely we'll we'll do that. Um, definitely we'll we'll um, do that. And for this is the first GRC um, open forum. Uh, just like orientations, we we do have different uh, depending on the feedback we receive, different times of during the week we want to set up these meetings. So. This was a morning or late morning one, early afternoon one for many of you. And we ideally will have, ideally have a second one. It will probably be in the evening. So that's a really appreciative. No, thank you. We I believe the plan of action moving forward um, as well. And I believe you're referring to the invites that's via the, the link um, called form site. So definitely um, uh, we'll notice that in our next meeting. Thank you. Okay, um, so I think uh, Juanita's audio may have been cut off. I'm sorry, um, but of course, I could like speak more. Um, Tina is available to assist you um, directly later today. If you'd like to follow up with Tina, Juanita. Yeah, Juanita, I can help you with that email issue. I'll give you a call. Oh, yeah, her audio is out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick message for 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 Juanita. Um, because their audio appears to be cut off. I'm sorry. Are there any other questions before we close up? We'll be, probably have time for be one more question. All right. Well, I hope I hope this was very helpful. Uh, this is the first. Um, open forum, as you can see, it's just very open-ended. You know, not not. A, I want to give empower all of you to ask questions and and ask us what what is going to be done to help you. you know, so I wanted to make sure instead of going through a whole presentation, really just give you the time to talk, which I think is very important. Whether it be appear positive or appear negative, whatever feedback it is, it's always important to let us know. So that's why the purpose is today. But I, I will. Conclude um, our open forum 
Um, if there are no other questions, um, and congratulate you again on a great start to the term, um, and have a great day. In case we don't hear from you tomorrow, I'll also have a great weekend, and we'll keep in touch. Yeah, have a great weekend, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Haney, for uh, joining us today. Dr. Haney is a very busy, very man. Yeah, thank you, Dr. And, Haney. And uh, taking the time today, as you, many of you already worked the chair, to answer your questions is very helpful. So thank you, Dr. Haney. You're welcome. Great to be here. All right. All right, everybody, I am signing off. Have a great day.